Yo, what is going on guys? Johnny GB here bringing you guys another Pokemon tournament review deck profile. We are doing the first place Harrogate Regional Zoroark Gyarados GX. Kind of a surprising deck that won. Um, not surprising the fact that Zoroark won, but surprising in the fact of the partner that won being Gyarados. Um, one, I was actually not sure of which Gyarados it was because there had been a couple Gyaradoses released. Uh, but then looking at the deck profile, this is a very fun deck to use. Uh, there it is. So we're going to take a quick look at the deck. This is what is played uh, card for card. I did not make any adjustments. If you guys want the deck list, it is down on the Limitless TCG link down below. Go ahead, click that. Uh, you should see all the deck profiles that did well at the Harrogate Regionals, the top 48. So really the goal of the deck one is to get Zoroark out, but two, you have Gyarados um, as a secondary attacker in the deck. This is pretty much avoiding stuff like Hoopas, Ninetales, I have blanked on the name, Ninetales. But there is one card in the deck that actually becomes really beneficial. And I've noticed it in testing. That is Alolan Muck. Alolan Muck in this deck is actually underrated. So the Power of Alchemy came out in the Sun and Moon base set. Each basic Pokemon in play, including players' hands, have no abilities. So, right off the bat, you're shutting down Tapu Lele's, other basic Pokemon in play, stuff like Sudo Wudo C play, opposing Magikarps, now that players are using Magikarp as well, Ditto Prism Stars, blanking on other basics that really are in the format that have those abilities that are starting to become annoying um lost march skip bloom no not skip bloom never mind um just right off the bat those were the four i could think of oh even marsh shadows marsh shadows is another one that's starting to see a lot of play in which muck is able to shut its ability down your hands not being shuffled so it's kind of a cool card, stopping Lele's, preventing uh, potential Lily plays, or maybe your opponent needs a Guzma, uh, and Lele's the only card in their hand. Kind of just a really good ability, really underrated card in the deck. Now, as far as the Gyarados goes, this is the Gyarados, I believe, from Dragon's Exalt, not Dragon's Exalted, that's black and white, Dragon's Majesty, I believe. Do not quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, Venting Anger is the attack we are using. Does 50 damage for each magic card in your discard pile. So, realistically, you can start off with two magic card because you have the two extra magic card here. And that gets you to 100 damage, which is not bad damage for double colorless energy. But then you can discard one more potentially. Now you're doing 150 for two energy. You have a choice band in the deck, which allows you to hit 180. 180 lets you get over Tapu Lele's. Still does not get you over Buzzwole, but still a very strong attack. Now, as far as supporters, trainers go, Elm's Lecture is almost a mandatory in any sort of Zoroark deck. Gets you your Pokemon on the bench as soon as possible. Now, one card I'm not really sure of, but I mean I can't question or doubt it, is Timer Ball. This deck did win first place over the Harrogate Regionals. And Timer Ball is just one of those cards, it either works for you phenomenally, you flip two heads, you get set up really quickly, or you go through two Timer Balls in a row, maybe three Timer Balls in a row, and you do not get a single heads. So it is just that risky card. Um, if you guys want to, Great Ball could be another addition. Um, Great Ball is a card that's been seen in play in a lot of Zoroark decks. So that's one of the big things. Judge and Mars Shadow just to disrupt your opponent because you really want to disrupt your opponent with this deck. You have three Enhanced Hammer, you have two Judge, you have the Mars Shadow. So you're really looking at disrupting your opponent as well. And then what I think is turning into an underrated card in the format, Acerola. Acerola is phenomenal with Gyarados and Zoroark. Being able to pick them up uh, having an extra Zerua and Magikarp on your bench, and then just being able to evolve right back into a fully healthy Gyarados or Zoroark, I think is just a phenomenal play and works fantastically in the deck. Um, then stuff like two Cynthia, three Guzmas, uh, two Kukwis, uh, Tate and Liza, surprisingly useful. I feel like it's another card that is overlooked. So 
honestly, in testing, the deck is very, very good. Like, it is consistent. I didn't have problems in bricking with the deck. I was able to always get Zorua's out, uh, Magic Carps out. I always had a way to fill up my bench, which was a great thing to do. I didn't struggle drawing energies. Usually when you play the four double colorless energy, you might struggle in drawing an energy. Uh, but I was not running into that issue whatsoever. I was drawing the cards I needed. Granted, could be a completely different story playing the game IRL and on TCGO. But I just felt really comfortable with the deck. Uh, so right off the bat, we do get a Magic Carp. I do get a Lele, so I can go for the turn one Elms right off the bat, which I like. And I will probably need another Magic Carp, uh, depending on what he opens up. He opens up Lacephalon. Interesting. So my opponent does open up Lacephalon and Heat Factory Prism Star, which I do not like. Um, I would like Judge or Marshadow. You know what? Marshadow honestly be a fantastic card to have right now. All right, so we do get a Zerua. I, I love that. Opening up a Zerua is great. We're going to play Lele down onto the bench, and with Lele, we are going to search out our Elm's Lecture. So, Elm's Lecture, we do have four of. And... Pretty much from here on out, Elm's Lecture is just going to be a... Not dead card in the deck, but it's going to be a card that... You can Ultra Ball trade fodder at this point. And we're not going to reveal anything else in our hand. If I were to Timer Ball, hit some heads, add some cards into the hand, uh, my opponent could judge me, which I do not want. Maybe he's playing Mars Shadow by chance. Uh, he can drop a Mars Shadow on me. He wouldn't do that with such a big hand. Uh, but I just don't want to add those cards into my hand, knowing I cannot evolve into him next turn. So here's the Guzma. He's probably going to pick on the Zorua, which I'm not surprised by. And is he going to get a KO here? Would he go for... He's going to go for the Mind Blown, so he's actually just going to discard the two energy he has attached off the bat. And what I should have done is I should have gotten another Zorua over a... Uh, magic carp so I can have some form of discard but we do hit the two heads um, we're going to grab myself a Gyarados and uh, Zoroark which is great hands full uh, my opponent's not playing any special energy so I'm really not going to need enhanced hammer this game knowing that I'm playing Blacephalon uh, he's going to be playing a lot of fire energy uh, let's see uh, I guess I'm just going to Cynthia here. Really didn't have anything in my hand that would help me. Uh, but you know what? That does help me. Getting a Zerua does help me. Uh, do I want to do anything here? Max Potion is really nice. You know what? We're just going to Righteous Beating. He needs two energy to get set up. It's interesting that he's actually playing Energy Switch uh, to move energy around. Uh, he could always Max Potion, he could Ace Arola. As you see here, he's just going to really start going through his deck with that Heat Factory Prism Star. Uh, he's probably playing Poipul and Naganadel. And with him discarding all those energy, he's not been able to get any of those Poipul or Naganadels into his hand. There is the Beast Energy. I do not know if he wants to go with that. He's probably going to attach it to his benched one. Now I really regret getting rid of that enhanced hammer so there's the first poiple and i really would love to see a guzma off my top deck he attaches beast energy onto his already weakened blacephalon why I get a knockout on that next turn. Uh, 
Okay, so I get a knockout here. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I'm gonna go for another timer ball here. Oh, look at that. See, this is the one game that, you know what, timer ball, I get that double heads. And we are good to go. Alright, so we're gonna play a second Gyarados down. Probably want to use that Magikarp as discard fodder. Uh, let's see, we're gonna we're gonna trade away one of the Ultra Balls. I have everything evolved, so nothing I really need. Uh, there is one Magikarp, so I can trade away this. So we do have a Magikarp into the discard pile now. We do have that Enhanced Hammer, which is great. Uh, do I have a Choice Band? No, but I did get the Guzma, and the Guzma was exactly what I needed to bring in this Poiple. I do not want him accelerating energy at any point in this game. Beast energy is gone. Poiple is off the board, so I do not have to worry about his Poiple being set up next turn. And without me knocking out his uh, Lacephalon, his Mars Shadow cannot actually knock me out, I'm pretty sure of. Because Mars Shadow's ability only grants you to attack stuff that's in the discard pile. Yep. So any basic in the discard pile. Um, he's just going to rescue Stretcher away, which is okay in all honesty. Because I am just going to be wearing him down. You see here, still no Blacephalon in the discard pile. So even if... Oh, he Mars Shadowed me. Is that going to hurt me? See, he was playing the Mars Shadow too. How is that going to negatively affect me? It doesn't. In all honesty, it actually helps me. See, he has to discard a Blacephalon, or I just attach a Choice Band next turn and I knock out his Mars Shadow. Uh, so he's just going to retreat. Okay, so Elm's Lecture again. Now it's just serving as trade fodder. I do need the Guzma. That is what I need. I need the Guzma. Um, Ditto Prism Star. Does it help me? Actually could against this thing. I'm going to get rid of the Max Potion this turn. Uh, just because Marsh Shadow would Oko me. And there we go. There is the Guzma. There is the Zoroark. We're going to attach the Choice Ban onto it. We are going to Righteous Beating for the 150 damage and the knockout. And claim two prizes. So next turn, Ditto Prism Star could actually be possibly trade fodder when looking at it. Uh, he still will get his Naganadels on board and start accelerating energy. Uh, so we're looking at possibly 3 energy on board. That's only 150 damage. Ooh. Never mind. He has the Beast Rings in hand. That is not good. Beast Ring is extra energy acceleration. What does he need? 5? He needs 5 energies to knock out this Zoroark. He attached 2 with Beast Ring. He's going to get 1 with Naganadel. And probably looking at one attachment for the turn. That's what I'm seeing. So he's going to Ultra Recon Squad. He's going to discard two Ultra Beasts, draw three cards. Or discards one, draws three. So discard two, you draw six. All right, so he discards four, 230. Did he kukui? Mind blown, does 50. Oh, he has a choice band. There we go. That's that's why. Do I have another Guzma? Well, you know what? I have Gyarados. I'm starting to think about it. I got Gyarados. I do hit for weakness. Um... Lacephalon's really not helping. Ditto Prism Star's really not helping me. Uh, 70, 140. I will need another Choice Band, I think. 
I will need another choice band, I think. Even with Kukui, I think I will need another choice band. Alright, well, we're just going to attack with the Mach Anger. 140 damage. Uh, if he does Guzma me, I probably lose three... No, I think I might be fine. Uh, no, if he does Guzma in my Lele, I do lose. Pretty sure. So there's the second Naganadel. He's going to Ultra Ball for a Blitzel, I'm pretty sure of. How many Guzma are in his discard pile? Probably none. So he has to play a Guzma to win. I think. So there's the Blitzel. Yep, there's the Guzma. He does bring in the Lele. He still needs the one, two, three energy attachments. And he should get those from the discard pile, right? Yep, he has five energy. So he will end up actually going for game. Uh, my mistake was playing down one too many Magikarp. If I had one more Magikarp on the bench, I would have actually gotten a knockout. So I lost here in game one. Um, and that's just me not understanding everything about the deck. Even though I kind of explained, I really don't want to put two Magikarp down. I should have actually gone earlier in the game and just gone for another Zerua instead. Uh, but... It is what it is. A loss in game one. Not the end of the world because I mean I did no I did admit that I know where I misplayed. And where it should have actually been a little bit better than what I did. So all he's gonna do is just a skateboard into Marsh Shadow. How many Guzmas have I played? One, two. Hmm. Curious as to why that is. Well, let's get rid of these two. I still have that Guzma in the deck. I guess I just have to judge. It's gonna give him two more cards, but... Um, pretty sure he can just attach an energy and that it'll be game next turn. Ah, that sucks. That really, really sucks. I needed a Guzma there, so that I could knock out one of the Blacephalon. Actually, you know what? Because he's set up, I don't think I actually could win. Really starting to think about it. Yep, so there's the one energy he's just going to detach. He's going to field blower, blow away, um, ultra space? I don't know why. Uh, oh, just using up all the cards he can. He's going for the lily. Just draws three, attaches another one, retreats, and now going to probably just hit for 230 damage, right? Or just goes for the 180 and the W. Um, that was just my fault. If I had another Garrido, another Magikarp in my discard pile, I ended up winning that game. Uh, but poorly played there on my part in that first game. We're gonna grab, hopefully, one, maybe two more games. Uh, just to give you guys a real idea of how this deck won. Uh, again, if you're gonna use Zorark as that attacker, don't do not, do not do what I did. And... Just... Load up your bench with Magikarp. Load it up with Zerua, not Magikarp. Use two Magikarp as your attackers. If one gets knocked out, the other one is pretty much just going in for the rest of the game. Uh, as far as opening hand goes, pretty abysmal. My opponent did Brick, so it will give us another card, hopefully a Zerua. 
As we see Shrine of Punishment, so we are playing a non-GX based deck. Non-GX non -GX based deck uh, will be interesting. Uh, we do want to draw a card. It is an Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball is nice. Ultra Ball will allow me to search out... Um, Tapu Lele. With Tapu Lele, I can get myself some... What are they called? Elm's Lecture. So I threw away the Kukui just because I want the um, Timer Ball in hand. I don't see me using Kukui right now. And if I need to, I play Pal Pad in the deck. Pal Pad will bring back those two Kukui if needed. So we're going to Elm's Lecture. We're just going to grab two and three, or two and one. Two plus one is three. All right. So two Zerua on the bench. And we are going to pass turn. I do not want to show that I have Timer Ball in my hand. I could have actually traded away the Timer Ball, or I could trade away the Timer Ball. If he does get a knockout here on this magic carp, then yeah, I will. Because I'm I want to make sure I optimize the number of cards I play in the deck right now. If I feel like I should just let the magic carp get knocked out, I have one that I can play on the bench right now. Well, next turn. Let's see. So he's going to go for the Oranguru. We're playing Shiny Lugia Malamar. Uh, I've seen people try to play this deck. I've seen people try to play it with Lugia GX. There is the Shrine of Punishment, which pretty much at this point, all my GX Pokemon are on a timer. I have no real good methods of winning it uh, with my GXs because I have no way to get Shrine of Punishment off the field at all. Shrine gets put on the field. I am SOL. That is all I can say about it. So let's see. He's got double in K. My opponent's got a pretty good hand so far, or board so far. So there's the magic carp we can attach, right? Right? Well, let us get the double Zora arc out. Let's trade away one of the magic carp. Ooh. You know what? Let's Elm's lecture here. Let us grab another two magic carp. So the main reason I'm saying grab another two magic carp is now we discard. Choice ban is absolutely of no use for me right now. And let's go for Vehement Anger. We're going to do 100 damage. Next turn, we will be able to do 150 damage uh, to everything that comes in now. Because I'll have three Magikarp in the discard pile. Uh, because he has no enters. Oh, he has two Psychics. So, two Malamar end up screwing me. And he plays the Tapu Koko down onto the bench. So, Tapu Koko can only do 40 to me because of weakness. Which is a blessing. But... Looking at it now, it looks like my opponent might not have anything. And this is the way you're supposed to use Gyarados. You get Magikarp into the discard pile. And I don't think he'll have enough turns to actually knock out my Zoroarks and Lele with Shrine of Punishment. That's 18 turns. 15 more for Lele. Let's see. He has yet to play a Malamar. Him not playing a Malamar makes me very, very happy. Because I do get a knockout on Shining Lugia next turn. And pretty much from here on out, Gyarados is cleaning up shop. That is all I can say about it, is Gyarados is cleaning up shop. We're going to trade away the Choice Band because he is not playing any GXs in the deck. If he's going Shrine of Punishment, so that is not needed. 
Uh, there's the pal pad again. If I do want to get those kukui, I can. Uh, these two trade balls are pretty much just dead to me at this point. And we're just going to go venting anger with the Gyarados for the knockout. 150 damage. We're going to claim a prize card. And there's another Zerua. Zerua is great to have on the bench. Means Zorart can start doing some damage. Now, if I feel like Zor uh, Gyarados is actually going to get knocked out, I can always use that Rescue Stretcher in my hand to bring back one Magikarp into my hand and then evolve it up into a Gyarados. Because I believe, unless he like Kukwis, Kukwis would do 40, 80 damage to my Gyarados. Is the only way I see it. And he's yet to get a Malamar. So he hasn't gotten Ultra Balls. He hasn't gotten Timer Balls, Great Balls. So Gyarados is in a fantastic spot to just clean up here. And probably, I can see why it's played. You're hitting 150 damage, so... Hitting 150 means you are taking out almost all basic non -G, or all non-GXs pretty much. Uh, whether evolution or not. And you're not affected by Shrine of Punishment, which is phenomenal. So there is the... Necrozma. That is interesting. Third timer ball. That is not what I want to see. So we're going to trade away the timer ball. I have no need for it. There's the Titan Liza. There's the Guzma. Uh, you know what? We are going to Guzma in the Necrozma, I think. Right? Right, we're gonna necro we're gonna get the necrozma. We're gonna go for the venting anger. It's gonna do 150, put him at 160. But unless he acerolas or max potions, he's getting knocked out next turn. As soon as he ends his turn, he's getting knocked out, and then I force him to promote at the end of his turn. Being able to claim prizes before my turn even starts is fantastic. I'm kind of just exposing, um... Let's see, he's done discard, he's gonna... Oh, so, so he has a Mysterious Treasure, he's going to get the Malamar. The downside is Malamar is only a once per turn, so unless he gets a second Malamar... And, let's see, what, he would need another Malamar in his hand, an Energy, he does get the Lily, so... He might have potential to start accelerating energy onto this uh, Necrozma Acrobike. So again, just deck thinning. And I think I'm actually in a fantastic spot to just end the game here. Uh, still early, 5-6, but I'm pretty sure I have a pretty good advantage looking at the rest of this game. And what I should have done is I should have knocked out one of the NK. Uh, but this does give me a chance to knock out the... Ma uh, the Necrozma at the end of the turn. And even should he go for enough energy onto his Necrozma to knock out my Gyarados, I do claim two prizes at the end of the turn. He only claims one. I have Rescue Stretcher and a Timer Ball in hand, so if I need to set up my Magikarp, I can. I have double colorless energy as well. And Zoroark will be enough to pick on whatever he sends out. Nothing here has 130 HP, which would avoid being knocked out by Zoroark. So Psychic Recharge, he's just going to attach onto Oranguru and Tapu Koko, pretty much knowing that Necrozma will be knocked out this turn. And next turn, I do pick up another KO, so we will be up 2-6 to six right off the bat. So let's see, we have a Ditto Prism Star. Ditto Prism Star could help me get a Gyarados out, which I kind of like that method better, a lot better. So Tapu Koko's out. Uh, I have Max Potion, you know what? We'll just use the Max Potion, we'll heal up Tapu Lele. 
Let's see. We can... Just attack. I think we're just going to venting anger. We're just going to attack. Knock it out. 150. We're up 2 to 6. Uh, he can use his Malamars to accelerate energy onto that Oranguru now. And Oranguru does 60 uh, plus 20 for each energy attached. He is only doing 100 damage to me next turn. Not really worried. Especially when I can just knock it out next turn. Zippity doo doo zippity day. That'll be game because I do have an Acerola in hand. So, the way I'm looking at it, if by chance he knocks out my Gyarados, not this turn, but next turn with the Tapu Koko, I am looking at... Ooh, what do we got here? Necrozma? Are we going to bring out the Necrozma? Oh, he's just going to shuffle three into the deck. Um, so, hypothetical, if he does knock out my Gyarados by chance, 150 HP still doesn't get a knockout unless he plays a Kukui. Uh, because Oranguru is only doing a max of 100 and Tapu Koko is only doing 40, uh, but say he plays a Kukui, all I would do is just put Zoroark in the active, Rescue Stretcher, the Ditto, Guzma in Malamar or something, Koko, whatever is going to be his main attacker, actually it's going to be that Lele. That is going to be picked on next. If I have to, I will bring out Zoroark and I will knock out that Lele because Shrine of Punishment plus Lele is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, he's going to move all these energy around on my board to knock out my Gyarados. He does have 150. So he has 150 damage counters on the board. We'll knock out this Gyarados. And I can honestly just go Ditto Prism Star, bring in Gyarados off the Rescue Stretcher, and pretty much just do what I was just trying to explain here is I'm just going to Ditto Prism Star, Rescue Stretch of the Gyarados. Now I have four Magic Carp in my discard pile. I'm hitting 200 damage, and he has nothing on board right now that would knock me out. So, just kick back, relax, enjoy him moving 150 damage counters onto my Gyarados, only for me to bring out my Gyarados next turn and knock out that Lele as he also clears all damage off of my board. All for one prize. That is all I can say. He's doing this, clearing up all the damage on my board for me to, uh... Pretty much, uh... Win this game probably 5 to, or 5-0. Is that, what, is that what it would be? 5 0? So he's going to knock it out. I have the double colorless energy in hand. I'm not concerned in any way, shape, or form. So we're just going to move Ditto Prism Star into the active. Uh, everything's going to get a damage counter. Yippee. Um, I could Timer Ball, Deck Thin. Just waste cards in my hand. There's a Gyarados. Get the Gyarados out in the active, attach a double colorless energy. Uh, what can we do here? What can we do? Nothing. All right, we're just going to Venting Anger, knock out that Tapu Lele. 200 damage on the board, and pretty much my opponent just has to forfeit at this point. He cannot do anything. Um, Tapu Koko is only doing 40 damage. If he attaches a Kukui with it, he's only doing 80. So uh, he would need like Electro Power plus a Kukui. Because that would give him enough to knock out my Gyarados. So there's the double colorless energy. I could be mean and just straight up enhanced hammer that next turn. Just for the stunt. Just to show that he won't have enough to beat me. Now Necrozma could be interesting, but again, this is me just attacking for game. 200 HP. Um, I could Guzma in the Necrozma Retreat Zoroark, knock it out with Gyarados for game. At this point in the game, I have a lot of ending moves. So there's the Necrozma. I'm going to throw that down onto the bench. He's going to attach two energy onto it with the Malamar's ability. Uh, but that won't matter at this point in the game now. Uh, what sucked was my opponent did start off slow. It took him forever to get the Malamar's onto his bench, whereas I pretty much 
started rolling right off the bat. So right off, right there, look at that. Four energy placed in one turn. Double colorless and two psychic energy. Good energy acceleration. There is the Mars Shadow. Uh, I'm not seeing how that's going to help him. Unless he's really searching out a final energy to knock out my Gyarados. That is the only way I see it as. Oh, never mind. So, Coco has the free retreat. He's just going to go for the flying flip. Hit us up with the well played. We will be picking up a win here uh, with this Gyarados deck. As we're just going to E-hammer him. Uh, and we are just going to venting anger Coco for the knockout in a one in one episode here today of the tournament deck reviews. Uh, I actually enjoy this deck a lot. It shows why it won the regional championships because it just hits hard. Gyarados, one prize attacker, can hit up to 200. Most of the time you're looking at 150, but if you get it hitting 200, your opponent's Pokemon really aren't doing much. Choice Band does 230. That is knocking out everything except Decidueye and Metagross, Solgaleo, Lunala GXs. Uh, just a phenomenal deck. Very good pairing. Double Colorless Energy Attacker as well. Let's you put in a bunch of other support cards. Still not sold on the Timer Balls. I did have good Timer Ball luck, but I'm still not sold on using it as a card. Uh, Great Ball could possibly work as well, uh, but also makes you more susceptible to... Garboder, Garboder item lock, kind of does hurt deck a bit, uh, but you know what, very good deck. Uh, Philip Schultz brought together a really good deck that ended up winning the Harrogate Regionals. Uh, you might see this deck played more, not really sure, couldn't tell you for sure. Uh, do have two more regional championships coming up on the 19th, so keep an eye out for those deck profiles in February. I will be reviewing the top eight decks in those regionals, uh, I believe Indiana and not really sure of the one overseas. But if you guys enjoyed today's deck review, go ahead, leave a like down below. Comment your guys' support for the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already done so. Please give me any feedback on misplays. Always helps me strengthen up my plays so that I can play that uh, much better for you guys in future deck reviews. But with all that being said, guys, I am Johnny GB with the Token Minorities, and I am signing out.